morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever the fluff you are. Now, as you've seen by the title, up, down, left, right, blah, wherever the heck it is. This time I'm going to have a little whinge about ticket prices. That's for rugby and for football. But my main aim is going to be just at the rugby. Just because, okay? Um, always drink water. Always dehydrated. Oh, heck it, let's get it. Anyway, so, as some of you may know, I have been to rugby and football in the past. Now, I always was more preferring the football because of the cost, because it was a little bit cheaper. Uh, about 20 to 25 quid a ticket. Now, this season, it's then gone up to 25 to 30 quid a ticket, which is now the same as what it is for watching Warriors games. But... Now, kind of understand with, with Latics, because their stuff is obviously going to be in and out, in and out, in and out. Because their crowds are obviously going to wax and wane, especially trying to work it out from what it was in the championship before all the mess. With the assholes that caused all of the problem for them to then crash out and go into League One. And all the time in League One and then go back up. But, you know, so that's by the by. And I know the club needs to get some money but sometimes some games might just be priced out a little bit but that's just by the by going on to Warriors though this is now where it gets a little bit annoying because many people that I've seen online have liked a comment that I said and have commented the same pretty much the same sentiment that the pricing strategy for watching rugby is a little bit asinine and a bit stupid a little bit backwards now yes understandably they have had the same pricing strategy for three or four years now but still after covid and then going through all of this stuff now with the cost of living and everything where a lot of people are having to really cut the cloth accordingly and work out what they can actually do with their excess money if they have any excess money you know there's that plus another argument is if you are wanting to get a season ticket and you are a new season ticket buyer at the cost it is now, this is without any of your renewals or an early bird, you're barely saving two home games. Two. It's like one and a half home games at the current pricing strategy. Which doesn't really give you much of an incentive, does it? Okay, yeah, you get 10% off of some of the things you can do, exclusive things. You get, you know, discounts on, like, you know, food and bev and a few other things, but still... The cost and that lack of slight upfront in that, you know, upfront feeling doesn't sit. Especially when it's then when you work it out like, you know, twenty four twenty five to twenty nine to thirty quid a seat. Per adult to single use ticket per game kind of has a little bit of mm, you know but the argument of, but we've had these prices for the same, you know, we've had these prices for three or four seasons now. No one's really complained to us. Have you not seen the dramatic fall in the attendances, ignoring the, ignoring the Rona, ignoring the games that were affected by Rona and all of the things that went on with that, ignoring that, have you not noticed the dramatic fall in your home attendances? Ignoring St. Helens, Leeds, Wire and Lee. It doesn't look good, guys. It does not look good. Now, yeah, I have been in that stadium when it is pretty much full. Because I have been to, you know, a very big game. I've even been in, you know, in amongst the... When it was a, you know, a derby game against St. Helens. I've been in there and I've been in amongst it all. Now, yeah, it was full. The St. Helens one was kind of like, you know, about an 18, 19,000 all in all turnout. And the World Club Challenge game against, um, you know. Where is it? I know I've got it. <laughs> Uh, against Dit Roasters. Yep. I know, I got the dreaded half and half. Sorry. 
I got that more so I could take the uh, take the mick out of the manager where I used to work because they said I wouldn't actually you know they said that I wasn't actually going when I was just looking for time off but no I did actually go love so there you go and I did take that in and approve but that was about 22 23 pound like again figures off the top of my head but yeah now, that one I don't mind paying the money for because that one was kind of like, you know, a, a one-off game where I wasn't, you know, where some of those players that were in there I was never going to see again. Apart from watching the World Cup, which again, that pricing was a bit... <laughs> again, that by the by. But, yeah, maybe guys on the board think about your pricing strategy because when, when you've lost an overall... Average turnout of 3,000 to 4,000 fans over four seasons. That tells you that something is dramatically wrong. And I know you're going to say, and you already have said in the past, well, but we've done deals. We've had special offers on and we've dropped the prices. We've done old school days. Old school days and shit doesn't work. Your old school days, yeah, that you know, your old school prices of like, you know, a tenner against Leeds and stuff like that because it's a certain date and it, you know, it, it's a big challenge and stuff like that. They're brilliant. Yes, I like that idea. If you could do that more, please. That's what we're asking for. More of that. Not this, oh, well, let's just stick it up to 30 quid and then, you know, one random game against, you know, against Wakey or whatever. We'll have a kid for a quid there and then we'll have another old school pricing strat against Leeds yeah but against St Helens we'll put the prices up we'll remove the minimum cap and we'll just have everything at 30 quid no no drop it Take, roll your 30 quid down to 25 and roll your 25 for your cheaper seats down to 20 please do that a little more and then introduce your kid you know your quid for a kid days alongside and then do a little bit more things like that be a little bit more wallet friendly be more family friendly if you could sort out your family pricing sometimes as well because Having talking to people who do not live within the area and it is a bit awkward to travel. The costs for them alone to do a whole family is extortion. Fuel, parking, which is also a bit of an arse. Because big games are in nowhere to park and you've got to go into town. Or you've got to know FAMO and do it that way. Come on. See, again. Fam ticks from anywhere else. Just saying. It does start to add up and it really does start to look bad on you that you're not helping anybody because your silence on a lot of these questions is a little bit out there. Yes, we know you've sorted out the money with, with Matix to be able to sort out the renting and everything for that. And then we know that you've done a lot of the other stuff. But come on. You say you want to be one of the shining lights for the community and for the area. Well, you could be a shining light for the community by being more people friendly and being more money effective. Because I know for a fact that having bigger crowds and decent atmosphere helps the on, on field. So if you really want to do it that way, better costs means more bums on seats. More bums on seats will feed into a better atmosphere. A better atmosphere will feed into a better on-field performance. A better on-field performance will then filter through to other people who are on the fringes of thinking, maybe I could go for a game or two, but I don't really know what games to go at. You know, if people started looking at it and looking at how it's growing and how the costs are and they look at it and they go, oh, that's really attractive. I like that. That's a good idea because it used to be a bit expensive. Now it's a good price. I could actually do that and I could take the kid for his first game. You know, I could take my mate for his first game. You know, when I didn't live in Wigan and I was with my partner at the time, I was thinking at that point in time of actually bringing them up to watch a game. Now, 
yeah, the whole bit they didn't really like big crowds and things like that, so I was choosing a game that wasn't exactly going to be a guaranteed big turnout. But then when I looked at the costs, it then got a bit stupid because to get from well they where we were at that point to here it did get a little bit expensive. And then factoring in all of the other stuff and everything else, but you know. There is things that can come and go and be here and there that you can do, you know, to be a little bit more. You can, I know that people have got to keep saying, you know, the papers don't exist, but I've seen quite a lot of physical papers. Even online, there's a lot of it getting pushed out. So if you could be more active in pushing it, you know, from the end, so let's just say that one game has ended. So give yourself 24 hours the wrap up of a game. In your wrapping up of that prior game, you could then start positively promoting the next game in the press, in the papers. You could get more going on with the press and with the papers and in the radios and everything else. You could do that. I know for a fact that in the 90s, there was boards and notices and things like that going to schools within the area and that did filter through towards Chorley and to Leyland and even to Preston. There was a big push of it and I know for a fact because I went to a school that always had a notice board and had sports coming up so that was your Boltons, your Wiggins, your Prestons, your Blackpools all the way through to Man City, Man United to Everton, to Liverpool, you know, it had Oldham on there, it had flipping sail sharks on there, and you know, it had Salford's team at the time, I can't exactly remember, it's like Red Devils, or Salford, you know, Salford Reds, or whatever they were back then, if they were the same thing, but it had a lot of sports on our naughty sports for what was local within the Lancashire area. It was on, um, you know, we had the Lancashire area, we had the Preston area, we had Greater Manchester, we had your Merseyside and Liverpool area. Because there was big catchment areas. So maybe if you could start doing that again. And this isn't just to Warriors, but this is to every goddamn team out there. If you want to start growing the brand, be more cost effective, be more people friendly. Be more positive with your own enforcement and pushing on of what you want as a brand. And please start to put it out there on social media because it's non-existent. You can look on Twitter and you can find about three posts about it. A majority of them all have the same nego comms underneath. Just people going, yeah, but maybe if it was a bit more helpful. Yeah, but it's not exactly giving us much information. Come on guys, you're all supposed to be big boy clubs and you're supposed to be able to work it out and push, 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 push. But do you? No. And then when you get your up and comers within ideas and things like that, it's just, no, either way, push it, push it, push it away, push it away, push it away. You know, people's YouTube videos that used to blow up have all of a sudden flatlined. Nothing. You know, people ask a question, a very valid question, about if they could, you know, partner up with you for something. Ignored. And then when they look at it, it's blocked. You know, it's a bit ridiculous. Some of you teams are supposed to be the greatest of all time and some of the best teams with the best histories and the best lineages. Yet, some of you are so bad at interacting with people and connecting with people that you're turning people away before you've even realised what you've lost. Because there was big opportunities for some of you teams and some of you owners to link with esports divisions and you denied it. So you've lost yourself millions in income there over the whole board. You know, you had cho you had chances and choices to make with partnering with, with a game company to help produce a game. And you turned it away. 
because you didn't want the hassle. It was two days of three hour talks and you turned it away. So you've killed that opportunity right there, haven't you? You know, you know, there's even opportunities where you could have, you know, an exhibition game somewhere and you've turned it away because you don't like the option. You know, there was opportunity for you to go and do skill days and helpful days during times where you could grow the junior division at the places like, you know, Charlie and within Blackpool and Preston and Fylde. And you turned it all down. So you've burnt bridges that you don't realise you've burnt because of the decisions and the basically boneheaded and bone idleness of some people within your boards. So just hear it loud. Be more friendly to the public. Please drop your pricing. Make it more cost effective and more attractive. 30 quid for a top flight game. Okay. But 20 to 25 quid for an excellent game would mean a bumper crowd for you. And if all that you're worried about is, oh no, but we won't make enough money, get out then. Sport is a loss-making game. Football's been a loss-making game for the past 25 to 30 years. You know, rugby has been that way for a very long time. You know, Warriors as an entity hasn't truthfully been making a profit since those glory days of eight in a row. It's never going to come back. You know, the glory days aren't going to come back unless you boys at the helm actually get it in your heads that you've got it all wrong. You really need to look at it better and think, maybe we did screw up. Maybe we did pass up too many opportunities. Maybe you need to start looking at some of the contacts again and start going back and going, sorry, we did screw up. We did turn you away too early and we should have listened to you because some of the people and places that you were talking to at those times have now moved on elsewhere. They're now doing something else. So you may never be able to get those opportunities again. But if you actually hold out the olive branch and go, sorry, can we please have another communication? They may start listening to you. But only if you stop being so bone idle, bone headed, and a little bit ignorant of what you've got around you. Because you've got a fan base that could easily fill that damn place. Every goddamn match, no matter what. If you made it more effective and more helpful to them. But will you? That is my question. Will you? And the evidence of the past years is no, you won't. I'm always going to think negative because I have been treated negative and I have seen the negative. So, to wrap up, on all sides, be more cost effective. Be more friendly. Be more helpful. And also, don't be so neurotically pig ignorant of what's around you. You are falling for your own trap. You have created your own downfall, your own failure and your own losses because you can't see the picture. So, if you want investment, Go look for it. Don't look for it to come to you. If you want good turnouts, please drop your prices and the turnouts will come. If you want more people around to have word of mouth, start it yourself. And if you can't do all of that and you think oh, it's too hard and you just keep looking oh, and you keep thinking it's just the old boys club, get out. I'm signing off because my throat is raw. Peace.
Peace.